But there is one last little demo for me, which actually is probably the coolest thing. I think the folks that we've talked to on the customer side and the, the field side are really excited about this. So this is um, basically our new root cause analysis functionality. And I'm going to show you that in the context of an issue, like Nate just described. This is a set of symptoms that are grouped into a single issue. Plan service um, is, uh, I'm sorry, web portal is having issues fetching data from plan service. So this is our plan no. service app again. Did this go start ahead. from PagerDuty? There's that graphic right below this. Did this like, did this issue start oh, from PagerDuty? Ooh, can I take this one? Yeah, take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that I- those curveballs. I'm spitting on the ball. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, I'm using a lot of sports analogies, which why? I love it. I love it. So uh, I've been in New Relic for a long time. And um, I think I even, yeah, Nika, I may have you beat. I think I started in 2013. You do, you do. Yeah, no, you were here yeah, when yeah. I started in tech support in New Relic back That's then. right, that's right. So uh, one of the things I'm most excited about is um, our platform is like opening more and more like every month that goes by. Yeah. I think just the other week, our um, product documentation is now open source. And I was like fist pumping when that happened. Um, yeah. and, and, and that's just a uh, one example of a much larger trend of, hey, this platform is open. Any data can come in and participate. And so what you'll see here is I like- I just want to mention this to those playing along from home. If you notice something that you think is wrong in our documentation, do open a PR. Like, like you can do you that can do now. that now. Absolutely it's crazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're opening up the platform. That's right. That's right. So platform's opening up. Um, and when we talk about these correlated issues, these alerts- um, these events from alerting engines can come from anywhere. So the sources, like obviously New Relic has its own uh, alerting engine and can detect uh, um, both anomalies and, and incident events and correlate those. But also you see PagerDuty icon in there, like, oh, that, what's that source thing? Well, you can use uh, alerting other alerting engines. PagerDuty is, a, is kind of a collector of alerts from many engines, and you can also connect into uh, you know, things like the Prometheus Alert Manager and AWS and their um, CloudWatch alerting. Send all those in and those can participate in correlation. So you can kind of bring everything together, many sources. It's, it's uh, not uncommon for our customers to have a number of different alerting engines which create silos when teams are only aware of their problem, but when they're connected, yeah, uh, you can bring that story together and like, hey, I got alerted for an issue, and you know, I may have these pager duty uh, alerts, and another team gets the new relic one, but it, we're all landing in the same page, and yeah. we all kind of are presented with the one story of that issue at hand, and so we know we're in it together. We know, we, uh, th like, from the moment you get that page, that we need to collaborate. Yeah, this this part feels so critical to me because so often, you know, I'll. You know, when I was developing uh, uh, at other shops, you know, I, of course, would install New Relic on my little patch of the world and being able to know whether or not another team had gotten paged because of the bad thing that I did was kind of a critical piece. You know, uh, of course, <laughs> the other part, when back when, you know, maybe you're not the person who breaks everything at your shop, it's just nice to know, hey, other stuff's being generated. So maybe you know, you're freaking out, but maybe it really isn't even your code that's breaking, right? Like, hey, this actually, this other anomaly has been going on since before you even deployed, right? So that's, that's really good. But yeah, just that convenience of knowing, hey, some other team has already been paged about this. So <laughs> maybe, maybe get on the same, uh, you know, get on the same page, if you will. Especially if that other team that's being paged is literally Alan Turing and Margaret Hamilton. <laughs> 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 You're like, it's not my fault. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Might be, there might be a little bit of this is canned. Maybe a tiny bit. <laughs> yeah, this is a little dated, but. <laughs> Al Al Alan's going to be real upset. Yeah, he's like, I'm trying to uh, stop World War II right now. It's but like, hey, I, I did some math, and now you're being woken up in the middle of the night by a machine? I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, but all, all of this is in uh, for the purpose of, you know, we, we talk about reducing MTTR. Well, MTTR is, is kind of a, is a story with lots of little segments. Yeah. And, the, you know, that time to understand and the uh, time to detect, you know, we're trying to reduce these little legs of that overall journey um, and shorten them as much as we can. So, you know, we've got anomaly detection on everywhere automatically, and we want that to help 
uh, shorten that time to detect. So, yeah. you know, we're able to observe things very quickly and the symptoms get, uh, uh, you know, triggered as soon as possible. And then, yeah, yeah that so time well, to understand is sorry, everybody, everybody knows about it at the same time that's in, that needs to, and is involved. And so that coordination piece and like, Oh, we spent five minutes trying to figure out who else was alerted. Like that just goes away and you can spend that, uh, on, on something more critical to resolving the problem. All right. That was the, that was the long answer to my question. I see the pager duty logo, but, uh, but Devin, I promise we will get back to you. I know you've got to go in just a minute. So, so, so final thoughts, final thoughts. We're not going to keep you after time. Yeah. So the, so the, you know, there's a ton of cool stuff like Nate talked about big, big changes at New Relic, I think. And it, it all is, you know, ultimately laddering up to hopefully helping that you respond to issues quicker. Uh, and one part of that, like you talked about, Anika, with the deployment event is that this root cause piece of this issue, this is new. So, you know, root cause analysis, that's sort of pretty obvious what it does, but let's go through the details here. Like we will surface deployment events as part of the issue, and we'll show it to you um, based on uh, proximity to when the issue was created. Uh, so that's great. Like if you think about how you're responding to issues today with New Relic or other tools, helping and putting a deployment, a related deployment, or a possible you know cause to the issue because it's uh, because it was the deployment, putting that front and center is is big, I think. And this is new. Like we have it now. You have deployment events, you can click in, see all the uh, specific deployments around uh, this issue. We are also surfacing what you'd expect, like error logs. When the er a relevant error log is available, we will show it to you in this middle section. And then maybe my favorite, because I may be on the team that works on it, so, you know, uh, <laughs> is the attributes to investigate. And this is where we're running an analysis on, um, for example, here, web portal, all the uh, data within the event data on transaction, looking at the attributes on the transaction event and trying to find um, changes. And we noticed here around the time of the issue that this, uh, the time it took to call plan.telco.neurelic, which makes sense because web portal is, is having problems talking to plan service. Um, there was a big spike. You can easily see that. Um, and then you can click in and see more analysis, which is this analysis page I keep coming back to. But you can imagine if you're, you know, you get page, you're on call, you can look at this issue and suddenly you're not looking at a single event. You're, you're getting at least some description of what's happened, a grouping of things that have happened. And we're trying to, you know, we're not taking you out of the process, but we're trying to automate some of the steps that you'd probably do, like go check if a deployment happened, go see if there's a relevant error log go see if maybe there was a change in the call time, external call time. We're putting that all in one place uh, automatically. Um, and this is, you know, V1. So we're going to definitely want feedback from customers and iterate on this, but yeah, this was my final demo. So I got the demos out. Um, yeah. We're excited yeah. about this. I, I, you, know, I'm, you hear me like, like typing in the background because this is cool as shit, right? <laughs> like, especially seeing like, Hey, there's a spike in one attribute. I just love that. Right, because you know, I I've maybe even told this story on stream before. Like, I had a I had a, a one of my first shops was like we had problem customers, we had like problem customer orgs, and they were really what caused the system to like slow down and fail. And mm -hmm. this just would have been, I, you know, eventually we learned about that that was even possibly the cause, like from tech support and clues and like stuff hidden in the Dead Sea Scrolls. We managed to finally find that, right? But the idea that on the very first night that that happened, that you could go in and just see, oh yeah, look at this one attribute. It spiked way up, right? Oh, that just seems like, and yeah. I don't have it here, but we do have a fake synthetic user that generates these failures in Demotron. So one of the attributes that we surface in another issue is literally, you know, synthetic user at neurelic.com. And, and we see the spike because that's the one user that's generating all the traffic. Yeah. So, so we're literally showing that kind of, you know, um, and, and, and it happens, right. You have like the one user or the one tiny group of users that has some very odd user agent, right. That's using, you know, uh, their, <laughs> their school district will let them get off of uh, internet Explorer seven or something. And, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you just, you, you gotta be able to see those patterns quickly. And so any attempt to like try to identify that early on is, is so, so key. Uh, yeah. I really, really like this. Is that, is that like an, Nika, what you described with the Internet Explorer, is that an example of 
like a trouble user or be, I, I guess I'm confused on like how a user could one user could like affect the system so so one user could really like like uh, take uh, I, I won't give the exact specific, but but in general like the company I worked for was an e-learning company mm. and they would have these virtual classrooms each virtual classroom would have between 10 and maybe 90 students in it right one uh, org made classes of a thousand students and two thousand and three thousand students. Uh. And so every view that you met, that you went through in the UI tried to load your student list. And so not only was the experience very poor for them, that's actually another part of that, that New Relic has covered long ago is like showing you those core, like, hey, you're, you know, here's your 90th percentile users or something. But yeah. this would say, because that was also being quite noisy on the system and would cause the system to slow down for everyone. So um, that would be an example. I mean, it might not be a single user. It might be an org ID in that case, right? Uh, but it could be a single user, right? It could be like this one user has a bunch of you know, classes that have a thousand students each. And when they log on, the system goes down. And I will tell you, situations where when a single user or a user from a single office logs on and takes down your system, are, are they will be common in, in uh, the year 3030. Like they keep yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nate. I was going to, I love that example and maybe to make it just emphasize a little bit more. And I think a lot of people who run production systems with an API where you have an API key and one API key, you know, that that's yeah. embedded in a, in a poorly written or maybe like highly distributed, you know, threaded script that can just hammer you maybe yeah. a little faster than, and you didn't put that rate limiting in yet. Cause, Oh, that's part of the next release. Uh, you know, these, these types of things where it's like, oh, and, you know, if, if you were to uh, decorate your transactions with API keys or some uh, um, uh, version of like the source of, of these calls, um, that's one of the things I, w I do want to highlight and emphasize about the way that we're doing this um, attribute profiling is it's not, um, it's not like a can set of attributes that we looked at and, or a collect. The implementation here um, does not care what types of attributes you have on your telemetry. So um, if you're using our agents, um, we will look at all of it. If you use um, our APIs within our agents to add your own domain specific metadata, like user IDs or, or something specific to you and you enrich your telemetry with it, we will show that here. Like if there is a shift in that dimension being present, in the kind of like bad time versus the previous time, it will shoot up uh, the list and, and will show it to you. So that, that, that's kind of a plug for, hey, if you use a new relic, totally add your own metadata yeah. to your telemetry. We use it, we use it and it can save you a ton of time. Uh, so yeah, if, if you had a user ID kind of show up and oh, that's that user, you know, XYZ. And uh, I've had experience here in New Relic where some account IDs, I'm like, I know that account ID by heart. You know, they do some really interesting stuff that puts some, you know, hurt on our systems. Love that they're using it. But yes, uh, so definitely add your own metadata. We totally take advantage of it in this root cause analysis. Yeah, Danny, I, I have say, a, I'm sorry, I have ahead. a New Relic secret. Let me expose a New Relic secret here for the viewers, but it's to Danny's question. One thing I learned in some testing we did around this launch is that apparently a lot of the new Relic executives use Safari and there was some consternation <laughs> on the engineering side that like, wait, they use Safari? Hopefully none of the ex execs are watching this yet, but maybe they are. <laughs> They're writing your name down right now. We just like you. <laughs> so Danny, like the example here would be, uh, we had a bug on that analysis page that I've demoed where it gets like in this weird loop, it only happens on Safari. So let's say wow. I had instrumented the, or the engineering team had instrumented for errors and suddenly like there's this huge spike in errors and we get alerted on it. If we looked at this attribute and it knew the, the user agent, uh, uh, browser agent, we could see, well, it's Safari, uh, it must be the execs again, like they're using the wrong browser again, you know? <laughs> so that, that was just funny. I was like, there was a lot of, there was some, yeah. They were doing it on purpose. <laughs> at large organizations then like, oh yeah, if a developer sits down and tries to do this, it also happens really slowly or it also errors out, but we've never fixed it. That's not usually the case. Usually it really is like someone has to be doing something different for this to show up. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I really strongly recommend, you know, uh, you, you, custom attributes is a very lightweight thing to add. So just think about a few, right? Like 
an org ID, an order size, uh, you know, a classroom, like a, you know, a general like size and weight of what you're dealing with, right? Like number of records or, or this kind of thing and just see, is there some correlation with those? Um, is it just such a nice tool to be able to do that? Um, so, oh boy, that's- Over to Nate, I think maybe. Yeah, yeah I, think we're, I, think we're, I think we're over, over to Nate. Um, uh, Devin, if you have to drop off now, no worries. We may, our, our feed may get a little funny for just a minute while Devin drops off and Nate's uh, screen share starts up. So uh, I apologize that these tiny seams are appearing in our otherwise perfect facade. <laughs> 